We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, we had to cut short our 15-minute break. It became two-minute. It became a two-minute break only because it's already 2:30, and of course, we saved the best for last. Of course, our last speaker today will talk about beating COVID-19 through nutritional health. It is important to maintain not only our our mental well-being but also our physical health during this time of global pandemic. We are honored to have with us the officer in charge, Nutrition Program Coordinator of the National Nutrition Council One. He is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics from Binguet State University, La Trinidad Binguet, and a registered nutrition dietitian. He has attended quite a number of trainings of trainer for nutrition. He is also a regular resource speaker on various trainings and events, which include local training on nutrition program management and nutrition planning workshop, basic courses for BNS, nutrition early warning system, nutrition in emergencies, Philippine plan of action for nutrition, annual regional NAO's convention, annual regional BNS Congress, annual nutrition, nutrition month celebration, and annual nutrition symposium. His educational qualification, work experiences, and trainings have prepared him and honed him to talk on the topic, beating COVID-19 through nutritional health. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you our last speaker today, Mr. Kendall Pilgrim A. Gatan. Okay, sa gusustansyang umaga po. Eh, hapon na pala. Yes, sir. How are you po, sir? Uh, we're fine po dito sa National Nutrition Council. Okay po. So, are you ready na? So, ladies and gentlemen, let us now hear the presentation of Sir Kendall. Okay, so good afternoon everyone. Uh, nakikita po ba natin yung aking slide? Ayun. So I hope lahat po ay busog so we can sir, focus sir, po dito sa atin. Po. Sir, yes, you po. post at uh, your slide. Kindly open it po again or uh, present it po again, sir. Hindi po okay. namin nakikita yung slides po ninyo. There you go. Okay na po, sir. Thank you po. Okay. So once again, isang masustansyang hapon po sa lahat po ng participants ng webinar na ito. And I hope lahat po tayo ay busog so we can focus and relate with the discussion. Pero I'm sure busog na busog na po tayo sa latest discussion po ni Attorney Romero on gender issues uh, as far as COVID-19 is concerned. So, but first and foremost, uh, we would like to express our appreciation to Chad Regional Office One, especially to Doc Mel for inviting me and the National Nutrition Council in this endeavor as another platform again for so, the National Nutrition Council to, prom to promote nutrition, uh, proper nutrition, as we are all embracing the uh, new normal. So I am tasked to present this topic, beating COVID-19 through nutritional health. Nutritional health. Uh, but I would like to emphasize at this point in time, as per statement of Malacanang, that we cannot really beat COVID uh, unless there will be vaccine. However, uh, we can slow its massive spread by following the minimum health standards like wearing face masks, ensure social distancing, proper hand washing and hygiene, ensuring good health and proper nutrition. Ayun. So, but before that, uh, gusto ko rin pong pasalamatan ang uh, partner po natin from the CHED, especially uh, Regional uh, Director of CHED, Dr. Rogelio Galera Jr., one of the active member of the Regional Nutrition Committee, 
uh, para po tumutulong po sa National Nutrition Council para po supuin po natin ang malnutrition within Ilocos region. Okay, going further, uh, I have only four objectives for this particular presentation. Na pagkatapos sana nito, the participants should be able to know the current uh, nutrition situation of the country, uh, appreciate the importance of proper nutrition during this difficult time. Uh, we will be able to determine ways of man maintaining a healthy diet while at home quarantine and realize the benefits of physical distance, physical activity and identify some ways on how to be physically active and appreciate the importance of having food garden. So ano nga ba ang sitwasyon ng ating uh, bansa pag malnutrition po yung ating pinag-uusapan? So sabi po natin dito, our enemy, malnutrition comes in many forms. Andyan po ang tinatawag natin na stunting, wasting, obesity, and micronutrient deficiencies. Pag sinabi po natin wasting, ito po yung mga patang bansot. Pag wasting naman, ito yung pagkapayat. Yung obesity, ito yung excessive weight naman po kumpara sa kanilang tangkad. And micronutrient deficiencies are inadequate levels of vitamins and minerals. And the clinical manifest manifestations of micronutrient deficiencies show when the condition is severe and has caused more serious health implications. So, ano na yung estado natin? Okay. Our invisible enemy of malnutrition comes in various forms, sabi nga natin, including the stunting. So, the 2015 National Nutrition Survey uh, conducted by the Food and Nutrition Research Institute of the DOSD tells us that one in three Filipino children ages 0 to 5 years old are stunted or short for their age. So this statistics is equivalent to about 4.6 million stunted children nationwide. So ganun po kadami yung dami ng stunted dito sa Pilipinas and they can actually compose uh, a region. Pag titingnan po natin, Statistically, compare po natin yung the whole population of the region compared to the, the whole population of the projected population of uh, stunted children. Another is yung wasting naman po. Ito naman po yung tinatawag natin na pagkapayat. So the, the National Nutrition Survey, again, estimates that 1 million Filipino children are thin for their height, wasted, or acutely malnourished. Ayun. So the 1 million children with acute malnutrition demands urgent and emergency response from the government. International studies also show that children with severe acute malnutrition are nine times more likely to die than children who are well-nourished. Okay, so pagtitingnan po natin yung trend po natin from the past decades, from 1989 to 2015, uh, it, all, it only show little improvement or even worsening over the years. So pagtitingnan po natin yung stunting po natin for, from 2013 to 2015, medyo tumaas po siya, including po yung underweight. So tumaas and a slight decrease naman po doon sa wasting and overweight. So these are among children ages 0 to 5 years old. At sinasabi din po nila na yung status po natin ngayon on malnutrition is an embarrassment actually for a middle income country like the Philippines kasi Filipinos are the second shortest in the ASEAN region. We are ninth in the global stunting burden and tenth in on global burden of wasting. At sinasabi po dito, na ang average height po ng isang Filipino male ay only 5, 3.7 and for female is 4.11. So, pumapangalawa po tayo doon sa Indonesia. Okay, so going down at the regional level, uh, makikita po natin na from 2013 to 2015 ay medyo nagkaroon po ng significant increase particularly on the level of stunting among children dito po sa Ilocos region, 
At kapag titignan po natin yung apat na probinsya po dito sa ating region, ay ganun din po yung nangyari. All provinces in Ilocos region increase in terms of stunting. Another one is 5 out of 100 children among 0 to 5 years old children are overweight. At sa mga school children naman po, 9.1% and 8.3% doon sa adolescents. And for adult, 31.1% or 3 out of 10 uh, Filipino adults are overweight or obese. Okay. So going back to the uh, main topic for this presentation, so in order to win our battle against our enemy, which is malnutrition, our government have developed the PPAN or the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition as the country's blueprint of nutrition actions and will also serve as guide by the local government units, the academe, and other sectors on their shared responsibility to really attain the goals of the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition. And ngayon nga po, nasa COVID-19 pande pandemic po tayo, tayo COVID-19 does not treat us actually equally. So undernourished people have weaker immune systems and may be at greater risk of severe illness due to the virus. And at the same time, poor metabolic health, including obesity and diabetes, is strongly linked to worse COVID-19 outcomes, including risk of hospitalization and death. So, ano po yung gagawin natin? So, sabi po dito, good nutrition is an essential part of an individual's defense against, against COVID-19. So, nutritional resilience is a key element of society's readiness to combat the threat. And focusing on the nutritional well-being provides opportunities for establishing Synergies between public health and equity. Ayun. So, ano po yung gagawin natin to improve our uh, nut nutritional status? Okay. So, before that, meron pong mga lumalabas sa social media na nagte-trending nga po na sinasabi po na bananas can actually prevent COVID-19. So, is it true or false? Actually, it's false. So, there is no evidence that Eating bananas can protect against COVID-19. Banana alone does not boost our immune system. So for stronger immune system, we should eat a balanced diet, including a variety of vegetables and fruits, including uh, regular exercise, uh, hydration, 8 to 10 glasses a day, and have enough sleep. And of course, other... Uh, uh, precautions like wash, uh, hand washing to eliminate yung virus and avoid infections. So isa pong lumabas na trend din po ay ang pag-inom ng tubig ay protection laban sa COVID-19. Is it true or false? False pa rin po siya. So walang sapat na ebidensyang nagpapatunay na maiiwasan ang COVID-19 sa madalas na pag-inom ng tubig. Ngunit, Mainam pa rin na uminom ng 8 to 10 glasses of water sa isang araw dahil maraming hatid pa rin na beneficyo ang tubig sa ating katawan. Isa pong lumabas na trend is yung paglalagay ng sibuyas sa bahay, mas lalo yung mga binalatang sibuyas. This will prevent you from COVID-19. So is it true or false? False pa rin po siya. So walang pag-aaral ang nagpapatunay na ang paglalagay ng binalatang sibuyas sa loob ng bahay ay nakakatulong upang mapuksa ang mga virus sa paligid. So mas mainam na lang po, idagdag na lang po natin ito sa ating niloloto to increase the palatability and aroma. And aside from that, makukuha po natin yung mga sustansya na manggaling mismo sa sibuyas which is rich in antioxidants. Yun. So sinasabi po nila, so kailangan po nating i-boost yung ating immune system para ma, uh, malabanan po natin ang possible effect of COVID-19. Kaya nauso po yung dapat kumain po tayo ng vitamin C rich fruits. So ang, ang, ang vitamin C rich fruits, usually ang alam lang po natin actually is the citrus fruits 
uh, which are the, uh, ito po yung mga popular na alam lang po ng karamihan na pinanggagalingan ng vitamin C like calamansi, dalandan, and oranges which are actually associated with boosting the immune system due to, due to their high vitamin C content. So while this is true, there are other vitamin C rich fruits and vegetables that you could also choose from like uh, red and gre green bell peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and dark leafy vegetables. Sample, malunggay, alugbati, and so on. And fruits like papaya, mango, pineapple, pomelo, uh, guava, and melons. Okay, so citrus fruits like talanghita, calamansi, poncan, lemon, orange, and pom pomelo are rich in vitamin C, which boosts the production of white blood cells that fight off infections. Pero hindi lang naman po vitamin C actually ang nakakatulong to boost our immune system. Kamot, uh, other food items like kamote, kalabasa, uh, papaya, carrots, as well as green leafy vegetables are also rich in beta-carotene, which are uh, transformed into vitamin A, which is very essential for strong immune system. Meron din po tayong mga food items, gaya po ng uh, nasabi kanina, yung garlic, uh, ginger, turmeric, which uh, are high in antioxidant and with anti-inflammatory properties, which will also help boost the immunity. So other uh, foods uh, that are rich in vitamin E, like spinach, broccoli, nuts, and pepper, uh, is also powerful antioxidant that helps the body to fight off infections. Pero sinasabi po natin, ultimately, the best way to boost your immune system is to ensure, and ensure the optimal health is to follow the Ten Commandments. Uh, ano po yung uh, Ten Commandments na tinatawag po natin? Particularly yung Commandment number one po natin. Commandment number one, eat a variety of foods every day to get all the nutrients needed by the body. Or in short, kumain ng iba't ibang pagkain. Ayun. So ito po yung Ten Commandments doon po sa mga hindi familiar pa po. So, ito po ay nabuo nung uh, na-develop po ng Food and Nutrition Research Institute yung Nutritional Guidelines for Filipinos 2012. So, nung last 2012 po kasi, nung last 2012 po kasi, na-develop po yung nutrition, updated Nutrition Guidelines for Filipinos. At uh, <coughs> based on studies nga po, Medyo konti po yung uh, tinatawag natin na nakakamemorya actually dito sa ating guidelines. Eh, dapat isa puso ito ng bawat Filipino. So maybe due to mahaba po yung mga mensahe, kaya nabuo po yung 10 commandments na uh, pinangunahan po ng National Nutrition Council. So ito po ay campaign actually to promote the nutritional guidelines for Filipino. So, may sampung utos ng nutrition po dyan na kung gaano po natin sinusunod sana ang Ten Commandments ng uh, Ten Commandments ng Biblia, ay ganun din po ang pagsunod po natin dito sa Ten Commandments or sampung utos sa nutrition. Yun. And we are actually encouraging our friends from the academe to help us promote these guidelines especially to teachers, employees, and students, and definitely, if we abide with the Ten Commandments as, li as like we are abiding with the Ten Commandments of God, we would be spared from malnutrition and the non-communicable diseases. So, kailangan po itong alamin, gawin, at palaga natin. Okay. So meron din pong nabuo ang FNRI, the Pinggang Pinoy. Uh, I hope everyone is familiar with this. So this was also developed by the Food and Nutrition Research Institute and was publicly known, uh, I think, last 2014. <coughs> Ito po, hindi po niya pinapalitan ang 10 commandments po natin, but rather to complement and explain further commandment number one, 
which is kumain ng iba't ibang pagkain and translate this into food uh, food intake and food proportion. So while the 10 commandments sinasabi po natin kanina will serve as our general guidelines for our nutritional well-being, yung pinggang Pinoy naman po will serve as guide in every meal. So ibig sabihin po tuwing kakain po tayo ng agahan, tanghalihan man yan or hapunan ay lagi po nating isaisip at gawing basehan ang pinggang Pinoy. Ito po yung healthy plate for a well nourished nation. So ano po ang nilalaman ng pinggang Pinoy? So technically, FNRI recommends that each healthy meal should be composed of the following percentage. But uh, sabi nga rin, in layman's term, half of the plate is comprised of vegetables and fruits. So dapat kalahati po ng ating plato tayo, tuwing tayo po ay kakain, will be composed of vegetables and fruits with the vegetable proportion a bit bigger and the other half will be composed of rice and the protein uh, rich food like fish with more rice than fish. <coughs> Okay. Uh, dito din po sa pinggang Pinoy ay pinapakita po ang importansya ng hydration. Kaya po doon po sa gilid, meron pong baso ng tubig po dyan. At uh, based nga sa recommendation natin kanina, drink at least 8 to 10 glasses of water every day. At para magkaroon po naman ng ownership ang Pilipinas po dito sa pinggang Pinoy, yung placemat po na ginamit is the Banig Design, which is a traditional hand-woven product of the country. Okay, marami din kasing nagtatanong. Uh, sinasabi po na kailangan kong uh, pawasan yung kinakain ko or hindi na lang ako kakain para magpapayat. Pero sabi nga po dito, based din po sa ating discussion kanina, you don't have to eat less, you just have to eat right. Uh, ano pong ibig sabihin nito? So, ibig sabihin po nito, Hindi mo naman kailangang tanggalin ang ibang uh, food items sa inyong kinakain, kundi piliin mo lang talaga yung mga kinakain mo and should be compliance with the pinggang Pinoy. Meron din po tayong ditong uh, daily nutritional guide pyramid. Actually, uh, lahat po ng uh, age group ay meron pong nutritional guide pyramid na magsilbi din pong gabay natin sa ating pamumuhay. Uh, ito po ay hindi din po niya pinapalitan ng pinggang Pinoy or ang 10 to my inmates, pero it will complement our existing guidelines. Ito naman po ay pwede natin gamitin for our daily daily guide kung ano po yung ilang kaano kadami yung dapat kinakain po natin sa isang araw. So kaya siya pyramid kasi yung nasa tuktok, yun po yung mga food items na kailangan po natin, uh, kailangan lang po natin in a small quantity well, the food items na nasa, gra nasa base po, ayun po yung kailangan po natin in a large quantity. Okay. So, gusto rin po namin kunin itong pagkakataon para po i-promote ang uh, banner program for nutrition, especially for the LGUs, the first 1,000 days program. So, I hope uh, aware po tayong lahat dito kasi one of our uh, uh, nutrition month celebration in the previous years ay nakafocus po dito sa ating uh, first 1,000 days uh, program. So ano ba yung first 1,000 days na tinatawag po natin? Ito po yung uh, unang isang libong araw ng tao. So from conception up to the second birthday of the child. So Ano nga ba itong, bakit natin ito binibigyan ng pansin? Okay, so sinasabi po dito, the power of the first 1,000 days, which is uh, also known as the golden window of opportunity. So the right nutrition in the first 1,000 days, which is between a woman's pregnancy and her child's second birthday, builds the foundation for a child's ability, ability to grow, learn, and thrive. So, sinasabi po natin, yung pagbubuntis hanggang uh, mag-second birthday po yung bata, yun po yung tinatawag natin na unang sanglibong araw ni baby. So, for example, sa pregnancy, 
we have uh, nine months plus yung two years, pag bibilangin po natin yung araw na yon, ay eksakto po yun na 1,000 days. Yun. Okay. So, bakit nga ba natin finofocus dito sa first 1,000 days yung ating efforts? Kasi accordingly, to really address our problem on stunting is we have to focus on the first 1,000 days of life. So, the impact of good nutrition early in life can reach far into the future. So children who are who get the right nutrition in their first 1,000 days are 10 times more likely to overcome the most life-threatening childhood diseases and complete 4.6 more grades of school. Uh, children who are not stunted also go on to earn 21% more in wages as adults and are more likely as adults to have healthier families. So invest investments in this critical period of the child are found to be worthy ev worth every centavo that is invested in terms of overcoming life-threatening diseases, school performance, income and productivity, and overall health and well-being. Kaya ito po yung uh, ina-advocate po natin sa lahat po ng sector, for, uh, especially the local government units, to, in, to really invest on this program, which is the first 1,000 days. At nag, meron po tayong existing law, actually, to support this program, the Republic Act 11148 or the Kalusugan at Nutrition ng Magnanay Act of 2018. Okay. So the importance of healthy lifestyle, particularly proper nutrition and physical activity, in reducing rates of diseases and death from chronic diseases has, has been well established. So kung maalala nyo yung uh, Nutrition Month celebration natin the previous year, noong 2019, ay merong temang kumain ng wasto at maging aktibo push natin to. So we already discussed actually yung kumain ng wasto uh, and eventually, mamaya, we will discuss yung paano po tayo maging aktibo. So this team actually fo uh, calls on Filipinos to practice healthy diet, engage in regular physical activity, and reduce sedentary behaviors. Kaya po merong push natin to. Ito po ay isang millennial phrase to encourage someone to do something or con continue doing something para po maging sustainable naman po yung ating uh, uh, healthy lifestyle. Okay, so going back to physical activity, kasi nagsabi nga natin, natapos po natin yung kumain ng wasto, uh, regular physical activity benefits both the body and mind. So it can reduce high blood pressure, help manage yung ating weight, and reduce the risk of heart disease, stroke, uh, type 2 diabetes, and various cancers. So all conditions that can increase actually susceptibility to COVID-19. <coughs> so it is also Im uh, improves yung bone and muscle strength po natin and increases balance. So flexibility and fitness. So sa mga mas mat uh, matatanda po nating mga constituents, so activities that improve balance also help to prevent them falls and incur Injuries. So regular physical activity uh, can help give our days a routine and be a way to stay in contact with family and friends. So it's also good for our mental health by reducing the risk of depression, cognitive decline, and delayed onset of dementia and improve the overall feeling. And of course, makakatulong din po ito para po magkaroon tayo ng savings. Of course, kung tayo po ay uh, healthy, may iwasan po natin yung mga hospitality costs and other costs related to illnesses. Ngayon, uh, in relation to that, sinasabi po kasi, uh, the benefit of physical activity is to prevent NCD. Ngayon, uh, dati po kasi yung smoking natin is the risk factors in having non-communicable diseases. At ang trend po ngayon, since uh, uh, we are able to address actually smoking due to existing policies, is 
uh, ito po yung nararanasan natin ngayon. Sitting is the new smoking. Kasi uh, definitely, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng sedentary behavior, uh, physical inactivity, which is a risk factor actually in developing non-communicable diseases. So ano po, paano po natin ma-ensure yung ating physical activity while at home? So meron po tayong mga ibang option po dito like try exercise classes online at uh, dance to music. Actually kahit naman walang quarantine, ginagawa rin po natin ito. Play active video games, try skipping rope, two muscle, muscle strength and balance training, uh, walk up and down the stairs kung tayo po ay may hagdan dyan, and do some gardening. Ayun. So during this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, siguro po uh, dito talaga natin na-realize how important is it to have a uh, food garden sa ating mga backyard nga po na sinasabi po natin. Kasi uh, yung accessibility po natin, the availability of food and accessibility of food, uh, medyo impaired po siya during the community quarantine. So napaka-important po na makaroon po tayo ng uh, access dito nga po sa mga affordable and of course libre po kung nasa bakuran and of course nutritious and safe food po. So uh, we are actually supporting the program of the Department of Agriculture on uh, plant, 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 which uh, encourage the public to establish their own food garden. So ano po yung mga makukuha po nating uh, beneficyo uh, dito po sa pagkakaroon ng food gardens? So number one is to reduce poverty, uh, diver diversify income and rural employment, improve the quality and quantity of household food. So imagine po natin during the uh, enhanced community quarantine kung saan uh, nauso po yung pagbibigay ng uh, food packs kung saan uh, karamihan po sa mga na ibibigay ay nagkukulang po ng mga uh, food products which are a uh, uh, good source of uh, vitamins and minerals. So kung nakatanggap po ang mga constituents po natin ng relief goods, i-combine po natin ang mga uh, uh, nakuha po natin sa ating mga food gardens, yun po ay... Uh, I'm sure mamimit po natin, makakakomply po tayo sa tinatawag nating pinggang Pinoy. And this will also improve the status of women kasi they need more vitamins and minerals, improve water and waste management uh, at home and community levels. Of course, yung paggamit po ng mga recycled uh, materials uh, will cut yung mga uh, waste po na nakakasira din po sa ating environment. And of course, reduce pressure on wild food resources. So hindi na po tayo maghahanap ng mga ibang pagkain para lang may ibang makain, kundi meron na po talagang food available in the house. Okay, so isa sa mga challenges uh, pag sinasabi po kasi natin ng gardening is wala naman po tayong uh, enough space para po matamnan, kaya po meron po tayong tinatawag na urban gardening. So, hindi hindi siguro kami yung eksperto para mag-explain or mag-discuss regarding urban gardening, pero gusto po namin itong uh, kuning oportunidad para i-promote ang pagkakaroon po ng uh, gardening kahit nasa syudad po tayo. So, ito din po ay naidagdag po sa Nutrition Man Talking Points po natin noong 2018, nung ang tema po ng ating selebrasyon ay uh, ugaliing magtanim sapat na nutrisyon Aanihin. So ano nga ba yung urban gardening? So urban gardening is the process of growing plants of all types and varieties in an urban environment. So urban gardening, which is also known as urban horticulture or urban agriculture, encompasses several unique gardening concepts to include yung ating tinatawag na container gardening, which is I think ito yung pinakauso at pinaka-practical na pwede natin gawin ngayon, and the companion gardening. Ayun, ito po ang example ng container gardening. Di po ba yung mga pinagtamnan po dyan yung mga recycled plastic? So, instead na napunta lang po sa wala o na ibasura at nakatulong po sa pagsira ng kalikasan, at least na, nagamit pa rin po natin. So, container gardening 
or pot gardening is the practice of growing plants, including edible plants exclusively in containers instead of planting them in the ground. So in fact, pati nga po yung mga nasa rural areas actually, kahit meron po silang mga food gardens na nakatanim sa ground, nag initiate pa rin po sila ng uh, pot gardening kahit wala po sila sa syudad. So another is the companion gardening. So ano ba yung companion gardening? So ito po ay companion planting in gardening and agriculture. So it is the planting of different crops in proximity for any of a number of different reasons, including pest control, pollination, providing habitat for beneficial creatures, maximizing use of space, and to otherwise increase crop productivity. So may mga plant na meron silang mga gustong tanim na dapat katabi, or meron din po yung ibang plants na ito yung iniiwasan na katabi. So maapektuhan po yung magiging yield ng production. So ano po yung beneficyo? Aside from, of course, number one, uh, provides a local source of food. Uh, this will also bring uh, communities and families together. So during uh, the community quarantine, marami po tayong nakikita actually sa social media that member of the families are uh, together na nag-form po ng kanilang sariling gardens. So at least nagkakaroon din po ng bonding within the family kasi nga nasa home quarantine tayo. And at the same time, nagkakaroon din po sila ng nai-increase po yung kanilang physical activity. So this will also educate the urban children about the origin of food. Kasi baka nga hindi nila alam kung paano magtanim ng pechay, ano po yung itsura ng pechay kapag tumubo. And adds green spaces to the cities. This will also help prevent soil erosion, mitigate stormwater runoff, helps filter air and rainwater, mitigates the urban heat uh, island effect, and creates leisure and recreational spaces for humans. Okay, so medyo patapos na po ako sa ating discussion. So ano po yung mga key message na nakuha po natin for this presentation? So unang-una po is we have to stay healthy and boost our immune system by uh, eating a balanced diet. Not necessarily na by uh, ubusin lahat ng vitamins rich, fo uh, rich, fo rich foods Pero kailangan po nating sundin yung Ten Commandments po natin. And we should be guided with the following. Yung present po natin kaninang mga guidelines like the Ten Commandments, Pinggang Pinoy, Food Pyramids, and the first 1,000 days. Also, it is necessary to know the various foods and nutrients since it will help in the selection of a combination of foods to meet the nutritional requirements in addition to satisfying individual individual taste and food habits. So eating a wide variety of foods within each group, uh, the go, grow, and glow, will assure one of ingesting known nutrients as well as other food factors, which might prove uh, to be essential for human nutrition. So meron po tayo actually existing policies uh, within the region. So meron tayong tinatawag na Re Regional Development Council Resolution Number Black Series of 2018, otherwise known as Enjoining the Regional Line Agencies, the Local Government Units, State Colleges and Universities, the Academ, and all concerned entities to utilize the Pinggang Pinoy as basis in serving meals and snacks during meetings, conferences, trainings, and other related activities. So, ang isa po kasi sa napapansin po natin, sa bahay, pwede po nating uh, uh, i-control ang pagkain ng tama. Pero sa labas kaya, especially sa mga state workers po natin, sa mga nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno, and other uh, private offices, kung saan during gatherings, of course, may pagkain po dyan, dapat po i-ensure natin na lahat po ng pinapakain kahit sa labas ng bahay ay compliant din po sa pinggang Pinoy. Kaya siguro kapag mag back to normal po tayo, kapag matapos pa na po yung new normal at uh, tinitignan po natin yung sineserve during our meetings and seminars, dapat i-demand po natin na dapat ito po ay 
compliant sa pinggang Pinoy kasi meron po tayong existing policies on this. And isa pa pong existing policy is the RDC Resolution Number 102 Series of 2019 uh, enjoining all the regional line agencies, local government units, SUCs, the academes, and all concerned entities to institutionalize their healthy lifestyle program. Kasi base po sa pag-aaral, ma, uh, habang mataas po ang overweight and obesity among uh, Filipino adults, mas mataas po ito sa mga nagtatrabaho sa opisina, kasali na po yung uh, government workers. So paano po natin ito makontrol? So dapat magkaroon din po ng, aside from magkaroon ka ng individual uh, initiative para po maitama yung inyong nutritional status, dapat magkaroon din po ng uh, enabling environment sa lahat po ng mga opisina, pati sa mga paaralan, at sa lahat po ng uh, uh, kagawaran na magkaroon po ng ma-institutionalize po nila yung kanilang healthy lifestyle program. So, pwede nyo pong ma-access lahat po ng ito sa aming uh, uh, official webpage sa nnc.gov.ph. Okay, so yun lamang po. Uh, maraming salamat po sa lahat po ng mga participants po natin. And of course, to the uh, CHED Regional Office. Thank you so much, Sir Kendall, for that very educational and useful presentation, especially during this time of pandemic. Uh, yung sabi mo kanina, sir, na sitting down or sitting is now the new... Uh, uh, sitting is the new smoking. Ano, sir? Kaya galaw-galaw po tayo, mga ka-webinars. And to our participants, let us, all, uh, let us all bear in mind that health is wealth. Okay, so let us now proceed to the open forum. Here is our first question, sir Kendall, from... Dr. Song, uh, Emmanuel Songkuan from Dimsu Esluk. Culturally, kain, kain Pinoy is five to six times a day. Do we really need snacks if we are already eating right in the three main meals? Okay, so maraming salamat po sa napakagandang katanungan. So actually, oo nga, uh, we eat more than three times a day kasi meron po tayong tinatawag na AM snack and PM snack. So hindi naman po ito pinagbabawal. Basta ang importante po ay lahat po ng meals po natin, even the snacks ay uh, we should ensure na lahat po ng mga basic food groups po natin ay kasalip pa rin po doon. So of course, hindi naman po kasi lahat ng uh, mga kababayan natin ay nakakakain talaga ng snacks. So we really focus doon sa uh, three times, uh, three meals a day, like breakfast, uh, uh, lunch, and dinner. Pero uh, karamihan po sa mga Pinoy ngayon ay meron pong AM snack at saka PM snack. And pag titingnan po natin, kapag i-access po natin actually yung brochures of the Pinggang Pinoy sa ating website, sa National Nutrition Council, and even uh, sa website po ng Food and Nutrition Research Institute, meron din pong mga guide para po makabuo ng one-day one meal na kasali po ang uh, snacks. Thank you, sir. Another question? From Miss Joan Cruz. Good afternoon po. I have a question regarding food being served at school, especially in elementary and in junior high. How can we be sure that food being served during recess time is healthy enough for all the kids since they are not particular with the food they eat when whether it is healthy or not. Okay, so maraming salamat din po sa napakagandang katanungan. So actually, uh, ang Department of Education po ay nag-issue po ng DepEd Order Number 13 to control nga po yung mga foods being served in the canteen at yung mga binebenta po within the school. So, kinakategory po nila yung mga food items, kung ano po yung mga pwedeng ibenta everyday, ano po yung mga event, uh, pwedeng ibenta twice a week, at ano po yung mga tal talagang bawal ibenta. 
So hopefully, at this uh, period, ay magkaroon talaga ng full implementation and proactive monitoring ng mga concerned agencies. So kahit sinasabi po natin na ito po ay DepEd order, ito pa rin po ay concern po ng lahat, lahat po ng ahensya, lahat, pati po yung mga PT, PTA, mga estudyante mismo. But sinasabi nga po natin, uh, we are also encouraging actually the parents, the mothers, or the fathers, or the caregivers na sila po mismo na lang ang gagawa ng baon ng kanilang anak tuwing papasok po sa school. So instead of giving them uh, cash para sila po yung mamili kung ano yung kainin nila sa school, is mas mainam po na mismo iloto po sa bahay kung ano po yung uh, if, uh, kakainin po nila doon sa school. And kahit po meron kasing order, hindi rin naman po natin mapagbabawalan yung mga bata na lumabas sa school para bumili kung ano po yung gusto nilang kainin. Kaya uh, while meron po tayong DepEd order regarding uh, uh, regulation po ng mga school canteens and uh, stores sa loob ng schools, we are encouraging the LGUs din po na magkaroon sana ng, ng mga pulisiya na magre-regulated po doon sa mga sari-sari stores uh, within the vicinity of the schools, especially kung nasa 100 meters away from the school. Thank you, sir. Another question from Miss Early Angel Reyes. Kung magda-diet, anong meal po ang dapat i-skip? Oh, nakikinig po ka, makikinig po kami sa sagot mo, sir. Or kung hindi naman daw dapat mag-skip, ano naman po ang dapat na measurement ng pagkain? Salamat po. <laughs> uh, Napaka-interesting po ng tanong na ito. Uh, pero... Sabi nga natin kanina, di ba, after the discussion of the Pinggang Pinoy, ay uh, you don't have to eat less, you just have to eat right. So kailangan mo lang pong piliin yung kinakain po natin. And skipping meals is not advisable. Kasi kung kahit sabihin mo, uh, i-skip mo yung breakfast, pero pagdating din po ng lunch, ay babawiin mo din po yung hindi mo nakain. So tendency, mag-overeating ka ng lunch. At mas malaki po yung tendency na mas marami po ang may store sa ating katawan which which will actually increase our uh, weight. So so hindi po advisable ang mag-skip and of course yung measurement ng pagkain. Kunyari, uh, we dalawa po yung i-consider po natin uh, kapag tayo po ay pag-balance diet po yung tinitingnan po natin, the quantity and the quality. So while we are ensuring na meron po siyang uh, go, grow, and glow, at uh, ang, basta ang ilalagay po natin sa ating uh, mindset ay dapat kalahati ng laman ng aking plato tuwing ako ay kakain ay from fruits and vegetables. Ganon. So kung gusto mo talagang uh, mag-adjust ng measurements para mas konti po yung calories na papasok sa ating katawan, di increase po natin yung pagkain natin sa vegetables. Kasi ito po, yung mga vegetables po is uh, fruits and vegetables. Yun po yung source natin ng vitamins and minerals. Mayaman po sila sa sustansya pero kukunti lang po yung energy or calories na nakuha po natin. For example, yung isang cup ng uh, rice ay equivalent po yun ng 200 kilocalories. Samantala, yung isang serving po ng gulay, ang equivalent lang po noon is 16 kilocalories. So, uh, doon po tayo mag adjust doon sa uh, nutrient dense, dense, pero konti naman po yung kanyang calories. Sir Gandal, noted po, we do not have to eat less, we just have to eat the right kind of food. Ms. Lynette, narinig mo. <laughs> Our next question is from Ms. Annelin Madrid Badua. During the pandemic and until now, mostly mga processed foods na ang naglipana for delivery, especially the commonly served in the fast food chains because it is the fastest and easiest way. What is your comment on this? What is your advice? Okay, so thank you for this question. Uh, Actually, pati po yung mga food packs, family food packs, uh, food reliefs uh, from the government itself, from other sectors, usually 
uh, hindi po natin may iwasan na meron talagang processed foods. Uh, since uh, it is convenient, uh, mas madaling iluto. And of course, yung kanyang chef life po kasi ay uh, mat medyo matagal. So medyo uh, during the first week of the community quarantine, uh, doon po sa mid ng Marso, nag-issue po ang National Nutrition Council actually ng nutrition cluster Uh, advisory number one na nag encourage po dito sa mga local government units po natin and other sectors na uh, tumutulong po sa ating mga kababayan to enhance the uh, content of the family food pack. So aside from the usual na binibigay po natin ay dapat dagdagan nga po ng fruits and vegetables and sh should also be from, from their area. For example, sa isang LGU, kung marami namang produce yung mga small farmers nila, pwede po nilang uh, sila na lang po yung bibili sa kanila and then include this in the uh, relief goods. At ang kagandahan po nito, since ito nga po ay parang first time po natin ma-encounter ito na ma-community quarantine po tayo ng almost uh, more than, uh, I think, uh, more than 80 days na, uh, as of now, compared po kasi during uh, typhoons and other uh, calamities na within three days, yung mga nasa evacuation centers ay magsibalik na po sa kanilang mga bahay. So ngayon, medyo long term siya. So kailangan i-modify pati yung pagbigay ng relief goods. So nagkaroon nga po ng uh, nutrition cluster advisory. At uh, I think karamihan po sa mga LGUs po natin na nagdi-distribute nga po ng mga food packs, ay minomodify po nila at ine-enhance po nila yung quality ng kanilang food packs kasi more or less, pagtitingnan po natin sa ating uh, uh, Facebook page sa National Nutrition Council Region 1 kung saan sineshare po namin doon yung mga good practices of, and best practices of our uh, local government units, karamihan na po sa mga LGUs na nagbibigay ng food relief ay hindi lang po nakafocus sa delata, sa noodles, at saka sa bigas, kundi ginagawa na po nilang variety. At ang uh, kagandahan po nito, Laging nandun na yung vegetables, uh, yung mga butong gulay nandun. Uh, pati nga yung mga taga San Fernando, siguro nabigyan kayo. May mga uh, dried fish pa po na binibigay, uh, itlog, and other uh, food commodities na mas uh, masustansya pa. Pero sinasabi din po natin na hindi naman po ibig sabihin na walang sustansya ang mga processed foods. Kasi nagkaroon po tayo ng program on food fortification kung saan we are also encouraging the LGUs na kung bumili po ng mga processed foods, pilihin po nila yung mga food items na meron pong sangkap Pinoy seal ng Department of Health. So ibig sabihin po nito, uh, ang mga food items na ito ay dinagdagan po ng essential vitamins or minerals para may enhance po yung quality ng no? food items. So pagdating naman po doon sa household, siyempre hindi po natin makokontrol kung ano yung kakainin ng pamilya, So sabi nga po natin, while yung ayuda na natatanggap siguro is more on uh, processed foods, kung meron po tayong mga food gardens, pwede po natin i-enhance yung mga iluluto po nating pagkain. Like for example, kasi lagi natin pinag-iinitan nga po yung noodles, eh pwede naman po nating uh, dagdagan actually yung uh, uh, pagluto ng noodles, dagdagan mo ng itlog and other kind of vegetables at bawasan po natin yung kanyang seasonings kasi doon naman po na usually nanggaling yung high sodium po noodles at maging masustansya po yung ihahain natin sa ating pamilya. Thank you, Sir Kendall. Another question from Ms. Junith Sekosana. What is the proper balance on the Go Glow Grow Foods for women who are already after menopause? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, the general recommendation po kasi is, of course, ano po yung proper balanced diet is to follow the pinggang Pinoy, whether menopause ka or uh, sinasabi po natin na menopause or hindi pa menopause, lalaki o babae, meron po kasi tayong mga pinggang Pinoy for all age group. Kung saan ka bilong na age group, meron pong... Uh, mga uh, recommended servings. Pero yung pinggang Pinoy is still the same na half of the plate should be comes from the glow foods. 
pero yung servings ng foods ay magkakaiba po siya per age group. So, mainam siguro kung gusto niyo po yung mga uh, talagang computed quantity ng uh, pinggang Pinoy, especially kung meron po tayong pinggang Pinoy for pregnant, ano? pregnant women, uh, kung saan yung quantity varies po per age group. So, pwede niyo pong gawing reference yun. Pero kung gusto niyo din po, na magkaroon po kayo ng individualized diet. For example, ano talaga yung kakainin ko based on my present situation. So, kailangan nyo po ng tulong ng isang nutritionist dietitians para po uh, i-compute po yung inyong desirable body weight, ano po yung uh, intake nyo na kilocalories per meal, so mga ganong bagay po. Thank you, sir. Another question from Mr. Candido Perez. Eat like a king in the morning, like a prince at lunch, and a pauper at night. Is there an impact of the quantity of food during this time? Of course, uh, same principle applies pa rin po. Of course, mas, dapat mas madami nga tayong breakfast. Pero uh, the quantity varies nga po. Kasi like a king, mas, mas marami sa breakfast. Kasi mas... Marami kang gagawin during uh, during the day, so you need more energy. But uh, in terms of quantity during this time, uh, per Department of Agriculture, wala naman po tayong problema sa food supplies. Uh, ginagawan din po ng paraan din po yung uh, food accessibility para hindi po magka-problema yung food access po natin. Uh, uh, ano yung tanong ulit? <laughs> yung quantity affected ba during this time? Ano? Uh, ang iniisip na namin kasi uh, halos lahat po ng uh, mga tao ay naka-work from home or nasa loob lang ng bahay. So, uh, siguro yung pagkain po natin during this time is dapat normal lang kung kumpara doon sa non-normal. Pero we have to ensure na magkaroon pa rin po tayo ng physical activity kahit naka uh, home quarantine po tayo. Kasi sabi nga, sabi nga natin, kung ano yung pinasok natin, yun na rin po yung ilalabas natin. At na ilalabas po natin yung energy through physical activity like exercise, uh, pag, uh, paggawa ng mga household chores. So, yun na po. Ang isang ipinopromote po natin is to in really involve uh, the kids doon sa household chores, pati sa pagbuo ng garden, and other uh, uh, recreational activities na pwede po natin i-apply sa uh, loob ng bahay. So kung sa tingin mo medyo naapektuhan po yung intensity and duration of your physical activity, I think you have to adjust the quantity of food na kailangan mo pong uh, kainin while at home. Thank you, sir. Another question? Yeah, na, na babasa ko na po yung question. Here is another question from Ms. Presi Osilios. Was there a chance that LGUs seek your expertise to at least uplift the nutritional value of the relief goods being distributed? Yes, uh, actually, uh, nangyayari po yan ngayon during the... Before po kasi, uh, more on... Uh, national approach po yung ginagawa like uh, the National Nutrition Council coordinating with the Dep uh, Department of, Sci of Social Welfare and Development on the enhancement of the family food pack being given by the DSWD. But for now nga, the much effort uh, is being done by the LGUs. So marami po actually nagsisik ng uh, advice from the National Nutrition Council kasi meron po tayong mga local counterparts. We have the local nutrition action officers kung saan sila din po yung mga tinatanong mga, ng mga local chief executives kung paano po i-enhance yung uh, kanilang mga relief goods para hindi po maapektuhan yung uh, nutrition situation sa kanilang lugar. Like for example, uh, yun nga po, ano po yung uh, dapat ibibigay sa mga uh, households na may buntis, uh, gaano kadami yung ibibigay kung ganito kalaki yung pamilya, uh, ilang number of days dapat yung ayuda na ibibigay. So mga ganong tanong. Pero sabi nga po natin, 
uh, during the first week of the quarantine, uh, nag-issue na po kami ng advisory, the nutrition cluster advisory number one, uh, addressing to all the local government units kung ano po yung mga nutrition actions na ia-apply po nila, nila during the community quarantine. So we furnish all the local chief executives through our local counterparts, the nutrition action officers, and we are monitoring actually uh, the compliance of this uh, uh, advisory and uh, submitting regularly to the Department of Health. Okay, sir. Thank you. And for our last question from Sir Schubert Sullivan. Good PM po, Sir Gatan. Mayroon po ba tayong module for body conditioning to be included in their daily routine to maintain fitness? Okay, so module. Ang parang ang pinopromote na naman po natin in general is at least uh, 30 minutes a day ay magkaroon po ng uh, physical activity and exercise po ang ang bawat uh, Pilipino nga po. Pero uh, sa amin, wala po kaming module really for uh, body conditioning. Pero pag titingnan po natin yung mga uh, previous spots, post doon po sa uh, fan, official page of the Department of Health, marami rin po yung mga sineshare po nila na ano yung mga uh, uh, kind of exercises with video presentation na pwede pong i-apply uh, while at home. Kung, hindi po, kung nasanay po tayo nga po tayo sa mga daily routine po natin sa outside the home, meron po yung mga recommendations and video presentations on how to stay active kahit nasa bahay. Okay, sir. Salamat po. Maraming maraming salamat, Sir Kendall. Uh, do you have any parting message to our participants, sir? Okay, so on behalf po of the National Nutrition Council Regional Office 1, and of course, for, uh, on behalf din po ng aming uh, Executive Director na si Dr. Asisayna Dayan Hirang, Kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa lahat po ng mga participants po natin dito po sa webinar na ito. And of course, umaasa po kami sa baw bawat isa sa inyo na tulungan po ang National Nutrition Council to promote and advocate proper nutrition. Especially nga po uh, dito po sa mga nasasakupan po natin sa schools, sa ating institutions, and for the general public. And of course, gusto rin po namin magpasalamat po sa a commission on higher education kay director Galera po for including us dito po sa napakagandang activity habang hinaharap na po natin itong tinatawag natin na new normal so gusto ko rin pong kunin itong pagkakataon para i-promote po yung aming uh, official uh, Facebook page para po mabigyan po kayo ng uh, gabay and continuous updates on nutrition during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, bisitahin at ilike nyo po yung aming uh, Facebook page, National Nutrition Council Region 1 and National Nutrition Council Official. At pati na rin po yung Ilocos, uh, Ilocos uh, Center for Health Development na page po. Maraming salamat po. Mula po sa CHED Regional Office 1, maraming salamat din po sa National Nutrition Council Region 1 at, and of course, uh, to you, Sir Kendall. To our dear participants, let us remember that when dealing with a devious disease like COVID-19, it is best to take a firm stand that prevention is better than cure. Thank you, Sir Kendall. May we invite you again to like our FB page, that is CHED Region 1, and to subscribe to our YouTube account, Ched Regional Office 1 would like also to encourage you to share today's webinar with your social networks. You can use the social sharing icons below your screen. We have come to the most awaited part of the session. That is how to secure or get your e-certificate. Okay, so we expect that you have attended the morning and afternoon webinar sessions. I will be announcing later the link where you can download the feedback form and the quiz link uh, today. 
So what you're going to do, what you need to do is to fill out the feedback form and take the quiz on or before 6 p.m. today. I repeat, take the quiz and fill out the feedback form on or before 6 p.m. today. Those who passed or received a passing mark of four out of six questions for the quiz will receive their certificates. Uh, for previous sessions, you can download your certificates at webinar.chedro1.com. So for your e-certificates uh, for the webinar sessions last week, you can download this at webinar.chedro1.com. Just wait for the announcement that will be posted in our FB account and in our YouTube uh, account. Okay, so here now is the link where you can download. Uh, uh, this is the feedback form. So the feedback form can be downloaded at bit.ly slash Ched session seven webinar. I'll repeat. You have to answer the quiz uh, in this form. That is bit.ly slash Ched session seven webinar. Okay. Okay, so thank you everyone. We appreciate your all out support and continued participation. I would like also to thank our technical staff, especially the power couple who has been here since this morning, Elvin and Lynette. And jump sila sa harap ko. Also to uh, Sir Mel, who is working from home but is co hosting uh, this webinar session, and uh, other technical staff who are downstairs uh, working. So, in behalf of our OIC Director 4, Dr. Rogelio T. Galera Jr., thank you for joining us today and we will see you again next time.